September 11, 2001 was a horrific event in our nation's history. People recall their horror while watching the first plane hit the World Trade Center on television. The thing is, there's no footage of the first plane ever aired. It doesn't exist. Smoke from the first building and the second plane's impact is what was seen on TV. The accuracy of eyewitness memory has been questioned for many years. The post-event misinformation effect is defined as people witnessing an event and then given misleading information about it. And when asked to recall the event, they tell the misleading information instead of what they witnessed. Why does this happen? In 2014, an institute of psychology at a university in Poland did a study about the influence of social, parasocial, and non-social misleading post-event sources on memory performance. Their study of the memory misinformation paradigm consisted of three phases. One, presenting the original source to the participants, which included video or slides. Two, exposing the participants to another misleading source regarding the original event. And three, a memory test in which the participants are asked to provide information consistent with the original source. In most research, misleading information was introduced impersonally, such as a written description. Social interaction has become a very effective method. Participants in the study reported knowing the answers more often than remembering them. In a final recall test of their study, the participants introduced items that had been told to them by a collaborator. These items weren't in the slides that had been shown to them. So going back to those who recalled watching the first plane flying to the World Trade Center on television, this post-event misinformation could have been introduced while hearing a conversation in passing or from an incorrect mental note from a headline they saw. In a United Kingdom university study, self-esteem is found to play a part. In two of their four experiments, they found participants with low self-esteem are more susceptible to post-event suggestions than participants with high self-esteem. They say this is due to sensitivity to demand characteristics and suggestion rather than genuine memory impairment. Anxious participants are found to be especially suggestible. This study suggests that participants low in self-esteem are vulnerable to giving in to peer pressure from others because of eagerness to please and reluctance to engage in confrontation with people. This article goes as far to suggest that police should use care when interviewing a witness with low self-esteem as they may be sensitive to any misleading information within questions and they may be more likely to respond with post-event suggestion.